Hi, I'm Joe Santerre. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. I'm coming to you from Berklee College of Music. Boston. In Boston. Hi, everyone. John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. On location today on the campus of Berkeley College of Music with our old friend Joe Santerre. How are you, Joe? I'm great, John. Good to see you. Good to see you again. It has been a while. We did an interview on For Bass Players Only, wow, a long time ago. I think it was one of the early ones, maybe 2009, 2010. Uh, that, that is still up there, by the way. And for BassPlayersOnly.com, just put in in the little search thing, Joe Santerre, S-A-N-T-E-R-R-E. And that will pop right up. I think we had some videos of you as well somewhere. But uh, anyway, uh, as I said, it's been a while. We got the whole story of your musical upbringing and how your career got rolling and into Berkeley and everything else. But given that that was a long time ago and you're always busy doing lots of very cool stuff, how about if you bring us up to date and give us some of the highlights on what's been keeping you busy over the last however many years it's been? Well, uh, I'm s still playing uh, quite a few gigs in a lot of different styles. Uh, um, I'm still playing with the John Finn Group. Some people might know about that sort of uh, underground fusion-y, rock fusion kind of band. Um, uh, I've been doing some recording. I just recorded with uh, Steve Hunt and Henrique Dalmita. Steve Hunt, by the way, was uh, Stanley Clark and... Um, Alan Holdsworth's keyboard player back in the 90s and so that was some fun uh, also just did uh, some recording with uh, Haim Pickles who is George Benson's keyboard player and everything from little club rock club jazz club gigs to function gigs tomorrow night I'm playing a function for uh, a party down on Cape Cod so I'm doing whatever I can do to pay the bills, and Berkeley is a big part of uh, my daily existence musically. Yes, it is. It has been for, what you say, over 30 years now? 32 years. My ah, goodness. Years. Well, you, you must be doing something that they like. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> What you holding there in your lap there, Joe? It looks like, uh, is that a guitar? Because it has six strings, so it must be a guitar, right? No, people, it's not a guitar. <laughs> well, technically it's a <laughs> well, bass guitar. Well, I guess guitar. technically, yes, technically. Well, you know what? One of the things that gets a lot of people excited and some people even upset and very vocal and controversial is how many strings should a bass have? That is a six-string bass, and uh, in, the, in the middle is your traditional bass, E-A-D-G. Yep. And then you have the low B and I assume the high C? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel? You you are kind of known largely as a six-string guy. So what is it about the six-string that you like so much? And what do you have to say to the people who, uh, who, who might give you a hard time for playing a bass with so many strings? Well, uh, for me, it's always been the range, obviously. I mean, it might sound obvious, but, uh, you know, the, having the low notes in many different situations is really nice. And I, I, I can just tell you from my experience, reactions from other people in the bands that are not bass players, when they hear those low notes, it's always a smile. They're always positive, like, oh my God, that sounds so good underneath there. I've never gotten a negative thing from somebody saying, don't play that low. It's always, can you play that low more? Um, n maybe not so much for the the high C string. You know, you have to be careful. You don't want to get in, in people's, uh, you know, way, musically, whatever's happening. But for me, it's just purely the range, having the ability to be able to play a whole note on the low B or low C, but also being able to play some voicings that you might hear on a keyboard, um, comping for a sax solo or w whatever it might be. So I, you know, I, I sort of understand the traditionalist thing, but also, uh, you know, things change and things progress. Um, so for me, the six string is, is my, my home now. I, you know, the seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 37 string, I, I don't know if I'm gonna go there. But 37 strings. <laughs> Imagine changing the strings on that. But you know, I've seen a lot of uprights that, that have three strings. So yeah. people go the other way too. But I remember when I got my first five string. It was back in the 80s. That's when the whole craze came out. And 
I got to admit, I was as guilty as anyone, even playing a wedding or something like that. I was way down there a lot more than I should have been. But eventually, yes. I got I got used to it and started to use it tastefully and appropriately, I think. And yes. even with the high C, I would imagine you can play a lot more stuff in position, which would keep your left hand yes. from, from having to move up and down yes. unnecessarily among the bass. Yes. What kind of strings do you have on that? Uh, I use the Adario strings. They're the best strings that uh, at least for what I'm looking for in my sound. Uh, for years and years, I would do the sort of traditional, I don't know if it's a traditional thing, but I hear a lot of players do this a lot. They'll, they'll stick with a you know, type of string for a year and then they switch to another company for whatever reason. But uh, I, I came to this, these strings and uh, I just think they sound great, especially with the Yamaha bass. Any words of wisdom for people who, who wanna try the five or six or 37 string bass as to <laughs> as to uh, how to approach it and how not to approach it? Uh, one thing that I would say that's very crucial, a lot of students that I see don't really address or aren't, aren't necessarily aware of yet, is muting the other strings that you're not playing on. Even on a four string, that e could sometimes be challenging. Absolutely, absolutely. So. You know, three string maybe not, M maybe not. But you know, on a four string, if it's challenging on a four string, you you can see that it's more challenging on a six string. So that's one thing that I would uh, really say to be conscious of. If Re you record yourself that way, you, if you don't think you're doing it and you play it back, it's, oh, am, yes. am I doing that? Yes, you are. Yes, that's an excellent. Or no, you're not. <laughs> excellent idea to record yourself because then you can really, really hear what you know if you're playing cleanly. And, you know, you have all the, the other thing about the open strings, too, is sometimes if it's not completely controlled, you might get a harmonic on, on the open string happening that might not necessarily be in the same key you're playing in, which may or may not be desirable. <laughs> you just, just call it jazz. That's what I do. <laughs> yes. Um, what else, Joe? How about the future? You've done an awful lot. You seem to have uh, fallen into something that works for you. Obviously, you're doing all kinds of different things. Is there anything else that, that you've always wanted to do that uh, you just haven't gotten around to yet? Uh, well, the first thing that pops into my mind is I, I, I did a CD a while back called The Scenic Route, and uh, I've always wanted to, in fact, I've actually started to do a follow-up CD, but I haven't had the time and the focus to to finish it. So I would have to say that would be my main thing moving forward. You know that, and uh, just becoming a better, more aware player and a more a deeper soloist. Deeper in every sense of the word. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Last question, Joe, and I don't remember if I asked you this last time or not, but what would you be if you were not a bass player? <laughs> Something outside of music. Uh, I've actually thought about that a few times, and I think I always come to, I love animals, so I think I would probably have fallen into something to do with animals. I don't know what. I don't know if that would be, you know, become a veterinarian or own a kennel where you keep dogs or work on a farm with animals i don't know what that would be but i i, I have a feeling that it had something to do with animals yeah okay great answer well joe great catching up with you let's not wait you. another uh you know 37 years before we do it again okay and uh, we'd like to hear about the record if that happens or anything else and uh, more tips on six string and five string and everything else awesome. so keep it up and we'll look forward to seeing and hearing lots more great stuff from you All right, thanks, joe santer thanks very much on the campus of berkeley college of music in boston massachusetts with our good friend joe santer i'm john liebman you're watching for bassplayersonly.com.